What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here with a real computer behind me with a real problem that we are gonna fix right now for real. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. The reason why I put all those for reals on there is it's hard to teach you guys how to fix a computer without real problems. If I fake a problem for the sake of making a video, I kind of already know what the problem is, which makes it hard to put myself into super sleuth mode and turn uh, on my triage way of thinking to be able to actually find the problem without knowing where to start. So that's the point of today's video. I have no idea what's wrong with this machine. I have some ideas and uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now the machine behind me is about four and a half-ish years old, I wanna say. It's got a 2700 uh, i7 in there, a 2700K i7. It's got an 860 water cooler. It's got some DDR3. It's also got a Z77 Sabertooth in there. And it's got a GTX 1080 that I actually gave him last week. So I've already been inside this system, but the problems have started since. I don't think the 1080 is at, at fault, but that's okay, we'll talk about that. Now the first thing you gotta do is you have to get yourself some clues. You've gotta know where to start. And I've got three major clues we're gonna go by here. Now the first two are ones that he provided me and another one is one I observed myself while installing the graphics card last week. Now he says that he plays a lot of World of Warcraft Legion and, and so do I admittedly. But he said as of the last couple of days, anytime he would start up the game, he would get in there, start moving around a little bit, and then the game would completely crash. Sometimes it would crash to desktop, sometimes it would completely shut down the system or restart. That's kind of a major clue right there on where we should begin looking. The other clue, actually there's two more clues, and they've happened since I've had the system here. One, when I installed the graphics card, I noticed there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of dirt buildup in here. The computer has unfortunately not really been regularly serviced when it comes to blowing out dust, and that could have led to a lot of the failure of possibly the cooler because the radiator is completely clogged with dust, as you can see. The other thing is he's got a lot of fans making a lot of terrible noise. Again, dust can kill fans. They get in there and they start to destroy the bearings and then your fans go bad. So I think we've got a couple of things possibly happening here. One, I think we could potentially have, like I said, a bad CPU cooler. And then I think that we could also have dust built up and stuff like the power supply. Remember, dust does get conductive if it builds up enough. So what we have to hope here is that the smaller issue of dust buildup and heat has not led to a bigger issue of pot potentially killing a component like the motherboard or the CPU. That would be a worst case scenario. Now I've got the machine hooked up right here. One other thing I've got to already start with troubleshooting was I turned on the system to experience the issues myself. Saw the same issue with the CPU fan warning come on. The machine then locked up. I power cycled it, and now when we push the power button, we get nothing. So that's where we kind of have to start. Let's see what we got. Yeah, power button completely dead. Now it did work, so I don't think it came loose in transit. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean out some of this dust here. Well, I, I, I'm gonna start with the power supply. Do you make sure that's good? Because obviously the system won't boot. But yeah, this is, oh, 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 oh. Oh my goodness, this is, this is so painful. So temperatures were clearly gonna be an issue. Something else I wanna point out too though is the fan right here on the radiator is what's plugged into the CPU header, not the pump. The pump is on a chassis fan header. So hopefully that's good news where it's just the fan was bad, but which would make sense to why it would actually start up and not lock up right away until under load because if that pump wasn't running, the CPU would overheat like nearly immediately. Oh, and by the way, I got this guy on Amazon, bought it myself. And uh, if you guys want to see a link to it, of course, it's down in the description. Helps the channel. But this thing has so much power, and it's sorry, and it's corded. Check out how much power this thing has. Okay, so I want to make sure that the power supply is good. So I've got this little jumper right here. You guys can do this with a paper clip too. Uh, you can find out online how to jump and start a power supply. But I want to make sure that the power supply is even clicking on. So we're gonna force that to happen right now. So we're just gonna unhook the power to the motherboard. We're gonna hook this onto the jumper. We're gonna flip on the jumper and see if the case fans will turn on. That will tell me if the power supply is even, is even starting. And as you can see, they actually are. You can see the, hope you guys can see that. The fans are actually going. As you can hear, they, they don't sound very good though. Listen to that. Yeah.
Those are the way his fans sound right there. That's not good. Yeah, so unfortunately, both of his 200 millimeter top fans are no good. You can hear the noises they're making. Stop that one. That was no good. This one's barely even turning over here, yeah. Okay. Now, so far, all I've done is actually just clean out the dust. I haven't even like done a actual scrubbing is the power supply so the film. Now he has a dog. Unfortunately, there's a lot of dog hair in here too. So if you have pets, you really have to take care of your system because it, it just is gonna bring in dog hair, cat hair, I don't know, whatever other hair you might have. But there's a good sign here. When I turn the power supply on, you can see the motherboard light does turn on. So I didn't actually check if we were getting that before. I just went straight to cleaning mode. Let me see if this power's on. Okay. So it actually did just power on by doing nothing but cleaning out the dust. And there was a ton of dust in the power supply. So what could have also been potentially happening is there could have been some arc or some shorting going on in the power supply because of the, the amount of dust that was built up in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this back over here on the actual test rig because this is just sitting on my workbench right now. And we're gonna plug it back in and see if we still get the CPU fault, uh, et cetera. But that's, the radiator is all nice and cleaned out now, as you can see that it's better than it was. But these are the two fans up top that are actually going bad. So we're gonna replace those fans. And I think I might actually just replace his H60 here and put in uh, another, maybe a bigger, maybe I'll give him the H100 or something. We'll see. We'll figure out, we still have to figure out what our issues are. We're not even sure if we're fixed yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. I tend to do that a lot. Like right now, I should probably, I should probably hit the, the stop button and go on to the next scene. But right now you guys are like, damn it, Jay, will you just shut up and go already? But I don't wanna, cause I know I'm, cause I know I'm winning. What I'm winning, I don't know. All right, I'm done. All right, here we go, Let's see what we got. We power it on, that's a good sign. Let's see what we get on the screen. Oh, CPU fan error, it's still there. If I hit F1 to enter setup, that's what we get right there. Okay, now the rear fan is actually working. The problem is this fan is plugged in, was plugged into CPU optional. And I think what happened is when he was having problems with the computer, he did a clear CMOS to see what would happen. And that's why he's getting that error on the screen now because he doesn't have CPU fan error turned off. So all I do right now is move it to CPU one and I have a feeling it should boot right into Windows. Okay, so obviously we're in the system now and all I did was move the fan for the cooler to the CPU header instead of the CPU optional header. Uh, that's one thing you gotta make sure that you do if you guys are installing water coolers, is make sure you put at least some sort of fan, a pump or something onto the CPU header. Otherwise there is a fail safe in the BIOS that tells you, hey, I'm not gonna boot up. I'm gonna, I'm telling you there's a problem. We're gonna overheat. And otherwise, unless you go into the BIOS and turn off that setting, just plug a fan into it. It's a good thing to know. I would always plug in at least the fan or the pump to it. That way you know if your little cooler has died, it has happened in the past. Might as well at least have that fail safe in there. So what I'm doing now, other than showing you guys that my workspace here is a complete and utter disaster and I need to clean it up. I downloaded Ada 64. They do have a trial version you guys can use if you wanna do a stress test on your CPU to check things like temperatures and whatnot. Um, it's, if you think your power supply might be at fault, which I still need to rule out right now, which is what I'm doing, download some sort of a stress tool like this, OCCT, Ada 64, even Prime 95, and put some load on your system because it's also gonna load up the power supply. And that's how you're gonna rule that out. So that's why it says trial version all over the place right here. So I'm just gonna load up the CPU right here first and I wanna see what CPU temps and stuff end up being. And we're looking for some sort of a crash. Now I'm not gonna run this test for very long. It actually only ran for a minute. If we look at the temperatures here, max CPU temp or average was 31.7 on the, on the CPU socket. The cores are averaging in the mid 40s. Right now it's not overclocked. It is, that's actually pretty good on temperatures. So I'm not worried about that fan up inside the radiator. But one of the other clues that he provided me was that Warcraft would almost instantaneously crash. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and recreate that situation with Warcraft and see if we get the same result after blowing out the power supply. I still am not convinced the power supply is bad, but if it was clogged up with dust and dog hair and whatnot, uh, it could have been causing some bit of conductivity with the dust, which would obviously lead to some of the issues like you're seeing. So here I am in World of Warcraft Legion. I'm actually on my Demon Hunter. Um, don't bother looking them up. I don't play them. You won't get a hold of me that way. But anyway, one thing I want to point out was when I started loading the game, I did kind of hear a little bit of buzzing coming from the power supply and not a coil wine type of buzz. It was different. It was, a, it was almost like an electrical crackle, which is a weird sound, but it's, 
it's slowly gone away. It could be the fan, the fan could be making noise in there, but I am in the Legion area because it's the most demanding on the graphics. It's pretty choppy here, but I mean, this, this, is, this is an older rig. You'd think i7 would be pretty good on Legion though, but it's not immediately crashing like he was saying it was. What I'm doing now is I'm just gonna turn on the on-screen display so we can see what's happening with the temperatures, at least of the CPU. I don't think that's gonna be an issue now that we've cleaned it out, but again, I'm now, since I can't make the problem happen, I've been playing the game for a little bit, it's not crashing. I still think blowing out all that dust, the power supply and the radiator kind of fixed our issues. I think the CPU itself might've been overheating because of just how clogged the radiator was but now I've got to just kind of test all of this. But I mean, our temperature for our CPU now is sitting at 50 C. Um, it is actually overclocked right now to 4.4. I'm trying to push it as hard as I can. Graphics card, um, doesn't do a whole lot in World of Warcraft actually. Graphics card right now is not under full load, so it's not pulling all of its power out. That's why I didn't think Warcraft would be causing an issue with the graphics card. But at this point, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call this one pretty much solved by just being dirty. The dirty, dirty little computer. So in this particular instance, my friend was pretty lucky that his only real issues was how dirty it was. He's also pretty lucky that all the fail safes with modern CPUs are in place to keep it from killing itself. It will thermal throttle and then shut itself down if it reaches a certain temperature. If that hadn't solved the issue, the next thing I would have honestly done would have been tried a different power supply. I didn't feel that the CPU was, it had any sort of issues. It was running super cool down into the 30s uh, and low 40s under load with standard clocking and right now with overclocking it was reaching about the mid 60s to upper 60s under load no problem whatsoever but i'm not too worried about it right now because i was playing uh, legion with the settings on 10 with no problems whatsoever and uh, although it was a little bit choppy this 2700k does start to see its age a little bit when it comes to world of warcraft which is pretty cpu bound especially in the new areas Everything's doing pretty good though, there's no problems there. But because he's gonna be doing like a complete pimp my PC type of thing, he wants me to build him a really over the top, powerful PC, sort of like Red Mist, I'm gonna be doing that for him. So we're not too concerned about this computer, we just wanna keep it running and keep it reliable for like a guest PC and some other games and stuff. So we'll probably change a power supply on this in the future, but in the meantime, he's still good to go. This also shows just how important it is though to keep your computer as clean as possible. I think a lot of people forget that even with water coolers, it's not hands off. Dust builds up and if you smoke or you have pets, it gets even worse and even nastier. I pulled so much dog clumps of hair out of this system. You really should have some sort of a monthly ritual, at least once a month where you go in there with some canned air or a, an electronic vacuum or something and get the dust out of your system. Because not only does it build up and block airflow and make temperatures go up, dust if built up enough can become conductive and that's where some of the damage can occur. It's not completely done yet. I do still need to change out the fans on the top as well, but those are 200 millimeter fans. So we're probably gonna put in a couple of 140s or something in there. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on the type of PC repair or the type of troubleshooting you guys would like to see, hit me up on Twitter or check out the comments, go down there, write your comment. And if it gets upvoted and we see some really good suggestions, maybe I'll look at doing that sort of uh, troubleshooting guide. Because I think we've done a lot of how to build. Uh, Paul re Paul's Hardware just recently did a what to do after you build it, right? Because a lot of people don't talk about installing the OS and how to get all your updates and stuff. But I think uh, not enough people have actually made videos about how to troubleshoot your problems. Because building your computer is great, but that means you don't have some sort of a big giant corporate warranty behind you to fix it if something goes wrong. So that's where we come in. Let me know what you guys wanna see and I'll do the best I can to cover it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and of course, I will see you in the next video.